What's going on everyone? So watchOS is officially here and here's all the new features, new changes that there is to know about this latest watchOS update. Starting off with the brand new added watch faces. I'm sure we all seen this one about the portrait. That was weird. <laughs> Which is a basically a watch face you create whenever you take a portrait shot. It has the number, you could have the time and a date either in front of the subject or in the back. Not only can you change the font of the clock as well as add some complications, but you can actually like move it so it gives like a cool portrait effect but then you also have world time world time is the additional newly added watch face that's available for the larger size screen model apple watches basically this just shows you all the time zones around the world perfect i guess if you're a pilot or constantly traveling around you can see the sunrise the sunset and you have access to four additional complications and then of course you could change the theme, the colors and stuff like that. And it does indeed support always on display. So if you have a series five or newer Apple watch was the LTPO hardware, that's how it looks like with the always on display on. And uh, of course, if we go ahead and hit edit, yeah, four complications is all we get for this one. Not a bad looking one. I just wish the always on display hardware had like a cool unique theme, but still looks great nonetheless. And then in terms of newly added apps, uh, now if you actually long press you can actually switch between grid and list view that's a little pro tip right there i'll highlight more about the tips and tricks and hidden features in a separate video but that's just a little quick one and this is really nifty and useful and i'm glad apple brought it back but mindful is the newly added app where they combine the breathe reminder with reflex so the old breathe app uh, the breathe animations can still be found here but on the Reflect, it has this cool, unique animation with like rainbows and trippy colors and all that good stuff. Other cool nifty features can be found in the message app. Now, whenever you actually send a message to somebody, you still have your quickly quick replies right here, which you can actually create some on your phone, send location, see the color detail and all that good stuff. But here you could also scribble, but as you're scribbling, you actually have access to digital crown. So you correct some of your mistakes if you did. And uh, yeah. And then down here, you have access to your faces, emojis. And if you tap the app icon, there is now GIF support. Now you can actually select a GIF and search a GIF off the Apple Watch like you typically would on the iPhone. So that's new. And then if you pull up Control Center, scroll down where the focus is, the Do Not Disturb, you now have access to the other focus categories that you could have access to on your smartphone. So if I take out my phone real quick and go into focus, these little sections you have here will actually mirror them right here on your smartphone to the Apple Watch. So if you'd like to create some, you can always tap the little plus icon right here and add it to the Apple Watch. But then if you activate one, so like the personal one as a final example, we go ahead and turn that on. It changes the do not disturb icon to the icon that we have on our do not our focus mode. And then when you exit out of it, you'll see it up here, which is quite nice. Now the weather app also got some nifty features that normally premium weather apps will actually give you. Like if we go ahead and launch it, you'll notice some things did change, but a nifty feature that it has is let's say for example, it does begin to rain like in a couple of minutes, it will actually notify you saying you a push notification that it will begin to rain pretty soon to be prepared. So it has that newly added notification onto the weather app now. Then if you want to operate your Apple watch without using both of your hands, as a fine example, active, if you go into your settings, if you launch the setting app and you scroll down to accessibility, and you go into Active Touch. If you enable this, you can actually hands free control the Apple Watch by just doing weird motions with your hands. I'll make a separate video, like a full tutorial on how you could utilize this. But as of right now, this video is currently available on Apple. They pretty much give you a quick rundown summary of how it works. This is perfect if you're missing a limb or something like that. And so this will allow you to hands-free like operate and navigate your Apple Watch by just doing pinches and gestures with your hand, which is quite interesting and pretty cool. So yeah, let me go ahead and turn this back off. But that's now added on watchOS 8. Another app that received some cool features is the newly redesigned map app. Not only is the icon slightly different, just like the weather one, the weather one slightly darker, but maps now, if we set like a destination, the loadout is slightly different and will actually send more push notifications than it used to. So the map app has been modified a little bit more to be more practical. And then additional apps that got added is the items finder for air tags, which is labeled find items. Now, of course, for privacy, this is all going to be blurred. But if you have air tags, you could basically tap on any air tags that you have paired to your to your iCloud account and you can allow it to play sound and also 
navigate with directions in case you lost it somewhere, as well as more additional options down here for notifications. And you can also enter lost mode in case it's really out of your position. And then the other added app that's similar to find items is to find your devices like other Apple products you may have laying around. Under find devices, this allows you to track your iPads, your Apple Watch, your Mac, any Apple device that is able to connect to internet that connects via your iCloud account can be all found right here in Elsa Funny Glitch. It even shows you the battery life percentage on some of these stuff too. Now the photo app also received a massive overhaul as there's now additional features and everything is just slightly better organized than it was in the past. So if you click on one, sorry for flexing, this picture just randomly popped up so we're going to use it. But here, everything is just more clear to use. But now there's a new share icon here, which you can actually share with people in your contacts by either message or email or your favorite or most recent person that you talk to via iMessage. But notice here, you can actually create a watch face from it. So it will give you the option for some of these supported options. So we got photos, light up scope. And if this was a portrait photo that we took with our iPhone, of course, we'll have the new portrait watch face as the option, third option right here. So that's nifty. And then if we go ahead and play something on our iPhone, like a YouTube video or something, I'm just gonna randomly tap on something. The Apple Watch will automatically, of course, go on to the iPhone, but the UI is slightly modified as now it'll actually show you the little icon on what's playing, including your HomePod. So you have more control of what devices are playing sound right here on your wrist. So you can actually tap on it, pause and play, connect to AirPods and all that good stuff. Now the Apple Music app also got a redesign as it mirrors the iPhone a little bit more than ever before. So that's a new change as well. And then in regards of health features, walking mobility is now supported on the Apple Watch, but that you can access on your smartphone. So if we go into our health app, let me lower down the brightness, and we go into browse, there's now a new mobility section right here. When we click on this, it will actually tell you your mobility status right here. And if it's really bad, I'm pretty sure the Apple Watch will actually notify you and try to help you improve your mobility and stance and stuff like that. So this is where you can find that new mobility option. It gathers all that data from your wrist, from your Apple Watch, and it sends it to your iPhone health app. Now the Apple Home app also got redesigned. I don't really use that many smart devices, but there's more information you could find here. So if you have like a smart thermostat, you can see the stats of the temperature and all that good stuff right here on your wrist. You could intercom, so I do have home pods here, and I also have three devices that are apparently not responding. That's great. But if you use HomeKit a lot, you'll be glad to know that the new home app got redesigned to support more data that you can view and activate stuff right here on your wrist. Now, I personally use my Apple Watch a lot for working out, and there's additional workouts I got added, one of which is uh, Pirelli's Tai Chi. And then if you cycle, and if you can't find a certain workout that you like to do, like cycling, for example, you can always just scroll down to the very bottom. You can add additional workouts that you like doing on a daily basis. They even have archery as a fine example. It has a lot of support for stuff. But if you scroll all the way to cycling, this is something I want to show you real quick. It actually gathers more data than ever before. With watchOS 8, in case you have a fall, so while you're cycling, you slip, you crash, the Apple Watch will actually be able to detect your, that fall detection with fall detection and be able to check on in on you and make sure you're okay. If you're unresponsive, of course, the Apple Watch will then toggle the SOS function and make sure you're all right. And if you're not, the Apple Watch will get a hold of emergency dispatchers and send it to your location as well, contact your emergency contacts. So you can seek help in case you need it. And the same, same can be said with other workouts as well. So built-in fall detection is automatically enabled, I guess, on all these little, little different workout activities. And then in addition to that, the Apple Watch will also alert you whenever you achieve a certain distance or a goal. So if you're running for like a one mile straight, the Apple Watch will loudly say one mile reach. So it'll send more alerts, which is quite nice. Now the Apple Watch that I'm using in today's video is a Series 6 Midnight Blue 44 millimeter screen display Apple Watch, non-LT, so it doesn't have the red ring. So in case you were curious what Apple Watch I have on my wrist, that's what it is basically. It's just a standard sport, Midnight Blue 
aluminum with this Pataka carbon fiber case that I'll have linked in the video description down below. Then there are unfortunately some missing features that's coming out in the near future for watchOS 8. One of which is the, uh, can be found in actually in the wallet app. So when you're using Apple Pay, there's gonna be feature support for Apple Key, which uh, will allow you to actually use your smartwatch to get in to your household with the door lock. Third party hardware is necessary to be purchased in order to have this feature in the near future. But you should be able to also store like your hotel keys and such like that right here on your Apple Watch, which is quite nice. Apple Car Key should be coming available in the near future as well. Again, it might be limited because only supported vehicles are gonna be compatible to be open and unlock and driven with just your Apple Watch. BMW is the one that's currently in the partnership to have this feature available pretty soon. And then of course, Apple ID, which will allow you to actually store your driver's license or your state ID on your Apple Watch. This is also another talked about feature that should come out during the same time when iOS 15 also receives this update. But from my understanding, only supported states are gonna support this. But nonetheless, that is another feature that's coming out pretty soon. We just don't have an exact date just yet. But all in all, those are the new changes, the new apps that got added for watchOS 8. So now you are all caught up on all the new changes and all that good stuff on your, on your Apple Watch. Again, the compatible devices for watchOS 8 is shockingly the Series 3 and newer. So, so of course, the upcoming Series 7 as well. Other than that, Make sure to stay tuned as I have more additional content coming out revolving around WatchOS 7, talking about the hidden features and some tips and tricks. So if you wish to stick around and you haven't yet subscribed, highly recommend you do so. And while you're at it, make sure to also hit that like button as those help me out a lot and I'll greatly appreciate it, especially if you got some good informative information out of this video. And now if you're curious, what are some awesome accessories you could purchase for your Apple Watch? I actually go ahead and cover that in a recent video, which go ahead and watch right over here. In the video next to that one, that's just a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.